You're listening to the LA Football Podcast. All right, Los Angeles, welcome back to the LA Football Show here on the LA Football Network on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Thank you all for tuning in. This is your Los Angeles Chargers segment of the show, our playoff-bound current fifth seed sitting Chargers take on the Broncos in hopes to lock that fifth seed up. They could get some help and have it done before they even play, but obviously if they win, it is theirs for the taking. So we are going to get all into that. Show is brought to you by our friends at Ben Online. BetOnline.ag, use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, gets you a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, and you're welcome to go bet on this Chargers team. You know, I put some money down, Jamal, back in when they were, what were they, five and five? Whenever they were around 500, six and six, I think, right? Yeah, they were six and six because they won straight. When they were six and six, I put some money down on them to win the Super Bowl, and the odds have got a lot better now so i could have a, a pretty payday if that comes to fruition as we will undoubtedly be in phoenix at the super bowl uh on radio Row. so hopefully our chargers are there for us to cover but anyway bet online ag promo code believe so you heard him giggle jamal madney co-host of the show uh how are you feeling about these bolts man i mean they're they're getting healthy at the right time. The offense finally exploded last week, at least in the second half. They got that third quarter touchdown off their back, and now they head into a, a week against Denver that, you know, Denver's obviously going to be scrapping trying to win, but at least the Chargers are in the playoffs. No concern for that. They could find out before the game if they lock up the fifth seed because of what happens before them. How do you feel about these bolts? Ryan, I, I, you know, don't want to toot our own horn uh, too much here, but this is sort of playing out exactly as you and I predicted four or five weeks ago, where we said there was a real window of opportunity here for the Chargers to build the requisite momentum to get into the playoffs at 11 and six, even when they were sitting at six and six and get those five wins in a row. They felt like very attainable, achievable games and be in a position where, Hey, can they get healthy? Can they get Bosa back? Can they get some of their pieces and play winning football five weeks in a row and really put the fear of God in whoever they're going to play in that first round? And potentially this is a five, you know, a four or five game, or it's going to be a three, six game in the first round. So I think they're either going to go up against possibly a, a Cincinnati or, or a Baltimore. Um, so I think it's going to be a very compelling first round potentially. And I just love where they're headed. And I think they have the opportunity to be extremely dangerous. They've got a great quarterback. They've got a great defense. And they've got a winning streak going into the playoffs. And those are the three recipes that you need to make a deep run through January. So very excited to see it. I was finally happy to see some pop in the offense, uh, in particular, midway through the second quarter till early fourth quarter. I thought that quarter and a half against the Rams, they really looked precise. They strung together long drives. I think that's kind of been the challenge with the Chargers a little bit this year. They'll string a long drive together, and then they sputter for a possession or two, and then they string another long drive together. I saw long drives in sequence against the Rams really created the necessary separation there and finally look sharp. I'm excited to see them against the Broncos. Who knows what we're going to get out of the Broncos? You know, are they going to lay another 51-14 egg to another LA team or are they going to be the team that probably should have won in Kansas City so who knows there but um, I think it's a winnable game and getting them to 11 and 6 especially with what's at stake with seeding implications potentially I think we're going to get the Chargers fastball and I think they're going to come out and and be really aggressive in, in what they want to do. Yeah, it's, you know, it's funny. I think most people are joking. Uh, I definitely do not believe this, but it's funny to see a lot of people talking about how uh, I think Joe Lombardi was just kind of holding things back to the playoffs and they're going to just unleash this offense. And, you know, football doesn't work that way because you're not guaranteed a spot in the dance uh, and you don't want to do just enough to get in. But I would not be surprised if there has been some stuff that they have not used a Partially, is that just due to injuries? I think there's some stuff in their arsenal that they really haven't used either a often or at all just because of the personnel that they've had up until recently now getting everyone back on offense. And um, and B, still I think there needs to be adjustments made. Like we talked about a lot 
last episode we did cover the Chargers, Jamal, and and so I don't I don't want to dedicate this whole show to Joe Lombardi again and and what the offense needs to do in, in improving and the running game and, and Austin Eckler and all this and that. Um, but I think part of the thing we've talked about too is when you have these injuries, you want when everyone gets back and healthy to it just be exactly like it was before. But unfortunately, and, you know, we could point to a lot of different teams throughout history that it does take time for the chemistry to be re- built back up, whether it's timing with quarterback and receiver, whether it's the offensive line getting congruent with each other, uh, whatever it may be. Sometimes they can tell you, now this probably took too much time and then blame whoever you want for that. But I think now, and again, it's been one game and it was against the, the battered Rams, but I think we finally now saw this offense, what it's capable of, and they'll play a very similar style defense this week against the Broncos. And then hopefully they'll just be firing all cylinders heading into that, you know, final or that first playoff matchup that will be highly anticipated by charger fans. I mean, everyone's, I think when they clinched against the Colts, we talked about how I can't remember ever seeing a fan base almost so disappointed in the playoffs is because of the way they won. But I think after this week, everyone feels really good about where this team is and there's all positive thoughts about it. And obviously still things you want to clean up, but I think overall everyone's like, okay, we are a playoff team now. Like against the Colts, a lot of people didn't feel that way. I did, but a lot of people were like, that wasn't a playoff performance, but I think now everyone's like, okay, I've seen enough now where we can do some damage. And the AFC man, it's a gauntlet. There's a, bevy of good quarterbacks and what fun matchups are we going to get in this one and hopefully go on a deep run right absolutely ryan and i think what i'm really looking for ryan is another comprehensive effort like we saw against the rams all three phases of the game and really just again the precision and now that herbert's getting comfortable having allen and williams and palmer together and getting comfortable with who's behind him and just sort of getting consistency at the skill positions, getting some consistency up front. And we're starting to see that comfort now translate where, okay, we know Keenan Allen's his favorite target, but can he pepper the ball around a little bit more? We're starting to just see more nuance and and, and more instincts uh, from the offense. Because I think the one still concern, Ryan, I have is also in terms of disposition, where sometimes a team play goes on a streak against lesser competition and then when they have to sort of level up that next game there's a little bit of a of a reaction a little bit of a sort of you're taking a gut punch and and there's some time that needs to be done there and and I think if I were to sort of critique anything right now it would be around the fact that two games that we thought were big games that against playoff teams may not have been as big as we thought a few weeks ago with the likes of the Titans and with the likes of the Dolphins, neither of those teams uh, may make the playoffs. And it's sort of headed that way where both of those teams have sort of gone in free fall mode and may not make the playoffs. So my one just concern there is that these five victories are against non playoff teams potentially. And the fact that the Chargers haven't beaten a playoff team all year going into the playoffs. So how are they going to level up? especially if they're going to have to play that first game on the road, hostile environment against a quality opponent that they're not used to playing that quality of over the course of 17 weeks. So for those reasons, I don't want them to close out the regular season just eking by against the Broncos. I want to see a really comprehensive, hungry effort because then you, you have that, you know that, hey, regardless of who we're playing, we're playing really good situational football and that's going to translate some of the wins that the charges have had earlier. It's like, well, we sort of relied on the fact that those teams were going to screw up. They were going to make a mistake. They were going to miss a block. They were going to miss a read. They were not going to execute because they weren't very good teams to begin with. I think the Rams game was the first time we saw really everything come together in a more consistent and a more prolonged way than we saw all year. And I'm looking for a repeat performance there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's what they, I think need to do. Um, I will say I'm very happy that, you know, the Chargers have already clinched so they can't not make the playoffs. And I would be very happy too, if, you know, the game prior, the morning game decides if they can just be the five seed to start. I'm, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. You remember the game that's deciding it? I'm like, 
blacking out right now. What's the game? I think it's, it's, it's got to be the Ravens game, right? I think it's it's the Ravens game. Uh, yeah, I'm I think you're right. Mistaken. Yeah, and the Ravens play the Bengals, right? I think so, yeah. I think, <laughs> I'm like, it's been a long yeah. week already. It's been a long yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. already. It's it's Friday, but it's been a long week. But So my hope is that that, that happens how it needs to happen, and the Chargers can know going into this game that they've clinched the five seed. And I say that because obviously everything you said I agree with. We want to see one final good output. We want to see everything get put together again to go into the playoffs. But this, and I'm not just saying this as a, you know, for my fan being a Bronco fan, but this Denver team in this game scares me because they got nothing to play for. Their coach is already fired. There's been good, good talks about, you know, their interim head coach, you know, Jerry Rossberg has taken over. Obviously the defense is still good outside of that lackluster performance against the Rams. And, you know, Russ looked a little better last week. Now I'm not saying he was old Russ, but he looked, he looked better comparable had three touchdowns uh the offense put up 24 points so this is a game that if this meant everything everything on the line i would be scared out of my mind so i'm very happy knowing that it doesn't mean anything in terms of playoffs it could still mean something in seeding if the game before doesn't get taken care of and so that is the kind of last thing i'll end with there is if whoever doesn't win they want to win and again i apologize to our listeners that i don't have that in front of me i can't remember who it is but whoever doesn't win. And so the chargers need to win to get the five seed. That is where I want to see everything you talk about. Like, okay, now every, it, this does matter. Now we need to go out and put up 30 points. We need to put up 27 points. We need to hold Denver to, you know, under 110 yards rushing. We need to do all these things. We've talked about all season long and, and see them put it together then for two or three straight games heading into the playoffs. So should be a lot of fun. Who do you, I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but who do you want to see in the first round? I mean, if you had it your way, because if, if they get the five seed, they'd play the four seed. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. Ryan, I think, I think the five is really important. And I think the way it shakes out is if the Bengals beat the Ravens, then the Chargers should get the five because yes. then the, the Ravens would slot under. Um, and That's then right. the Chargers sitting there at five. And then the Chargers in that four or five are probably going to play – on the road against the AFC South champion, which is going to be the winner of the Jaguars and the Titans. And I think that's where you want to be. I, yeah. I think if you're the Chargers, you want to be the five. <laughs> you know, uh, do I want to go on the road and play Josh Allen or Mahomes or Burrow, or do I want to play the Jaguars <laughs> or the Titans? I think it's a pretty, pretty no-brainer there that the Chargers yeah. want to be the five. So I think whatever they have to do to make that happen. So if the Bengals win – Mission accomplished. It's all done. Uh, if the if the Ravens upset, then obviously it puts a lot on the line for the Chargers to be able to do that. Because I think it's a huge difference, Ryan. That's yeah. one seed where, look, as well as the Chargers have played, to go and ask them to go to Cincinnati, to go to Buffalo, to go to Kansas City and win a game. I'm not saying they can't do it. They certainly have the roster. But it feels like a tall order. It feels like a big ask. Asking yeah. them to go on the road – to, it's probably going to be Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville is going to beat the Titans at home and go yeah. on the road and play Jacksonville in a revenge game. Remember, Jacksonville embarrassed spanked the Chargers, them. spanked them. And you and I said way back then, we were like, you know what? And when, when all the dust settles, we talked about Doug Peterson's revival. We talked about what this roster is. We said, you know, when the dust settles, as funny as this may seem, the Chargers are probably may very well be in the playoffs. And lo and behold, we're on the cusp of that happening. So I would much rather see a revenge game against a very young quarterback who's making his first career start in the playoffs than one of the three uh, of the five best quarterbacks in football in their building. So there's a huge difference there. I think they got to do what they need to do to get this five. Yep. I Yeah, no brainer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I cannot wait to hopefully see Herbert versus Burrow. Um, but I do, I don't want that in the first round. Let's have that be like the championship game or, or the, at least the divisional round. Um, and, and, and us saying that, and obviously we'll have a lot more time to talk about it after this game. Cause then we'll know who the matchup will be, but us saying that, and I, I'm not speaking for you, but I know your thought process just because, yeah, you obviously want Jacksonville more of those. That's still not a pushover game. Jacksonville's looked very good. It's, you know, it's funny. Jacksonville is such a funny team, Jamal, because, they started the season, so when they beat the Chargers, it was like, oh, man, what a horrible loss for the Chargers. And then they won, like, two more games, though. And everyone was like, oh, this Jacksonville's team's for real. They took right. – I remember they played Philly, and at one point they were tied with Philly, and then Philly kind of 
pulled away in the fourth quarter there. And then after that, they kind of went on a tumble. And then everyone was like, oh, okay, never mind. Jacksonville still Jacksonville. And then now they've gone on this huge run again and had some big wins and, you know, beat the Cowboys in that overtime game. And, and so we know Doug Peterson, it's a well-coached team. They've gotten their running game going now with, you know, the likes of Travis Etienne, obviously the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, who, again, this is why I hate week to week narratives. Also, everyone like forgot about him after his rookie year because of he wasn't good his rookie year. It's like, yeah, no one was good with Urban Meyer and what was going on down there. He's looking like the former first overall pick. So definitely a better matchup. I still would definitely like the Chargers in that game, but you know, Jacksonville's no pushover. They're playing, they, they like the Chargers are playing their best football right now. They're very similar ecosystems surrounding those two programs right now. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, you said it best. I mean, you could argue that the only team hotter in the NFL and in the AFC in particular than the Chargers is Jacksonville. And yeah. so you, you're potentially looking at two teams uh, that are the two hottest teams in the AFC. And let's throw Green Bay in there as being super hot as well, obviously, trying to get into the dance. But you're looking at a situation here, Ryan, where you could potentially be having Jacksonville having won five in a row the Chargers having won five in a row going in, going head to head in that first round of Jacksonville. So it's going to be a very compelling game. And Doug Peterson, obviously, Super Bowl champion coach, he's really got this team humming. And I saw something really interesting on ESPN yesterday, Ryan, with some of the advanced statistics with, with, with Bill Barnwell. And he was saying that since that London game in week nine, Trevor Lawrence has been the number one quarterback in the NFL throwing outside of the numbers. So throwing balls to the outside in the sidelines has really been Jacksonville's bread and butter off of play action and sort of avoiding that middle of the field. And when you look at the fact that the Chargers will not be without J.C. Jackson and some of the challenges and the ebbs and flows that they've had in the secondary, it's certainly not going to be an easy matchup by any uh, any any ifs, ands, or buts about that. But having said all of that, you know, would you rather go to Jacksonville or you want to go play Mahomes or you want to go play Baby Brady or you want to go play Josh Allen? So pick your poison, but I'll I'll happily take my Jacksonville poison pill if if that's the option. Yeah, I mean, look at the just look at the quarterbacks in the AFC playoffs. You got Mahomes, you got Allen, you got Joe Burrow, you got. Um, Justin Herbert, obviously you got, if he's healthy again, Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. and then you got Trevor Lawrence and then potentially then you have like Kenny Pickett or, or whoever gets in the, in the seventh seed, but like six of the league's probably 10 best quarterbacks all in the same conference. It's wild. Right. I mean, every guy is either a top five pick or an MVP or yeah. a guy who went to the Super Bowl. You know? I mean, it's just, it's unreal. Uh, when you look at how decorated this group is. So hopefully this is the first year of many years to come of this Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Herbert, where we get these four quarterbacks in the final four of the AFC every year for the next five, six, seven years. And they have to sort of battle it out to get to the Super Bowl. So I'm, I'm really excited about that possibility and, and moving forward and really starting to get some of these budding rivalries going. Obviously, Chargers and Chiefs, that's going to be a rivalry into the future, given the division. But I'd love to see some of these, uh, you know, inter-division rivalries in the playoffs, much in the way 90s and 2000s NBA playoffs work, much in the way the 90s rivalries in the NFL work with, with the Cowboys and the Niners and the Cowboys and the Packers and, you know, some of the yeah. things that we had going on in the AFC, Steelers, Colts, and then, of course, Patriots, Broncos later in, in the in the 2010 so I'm really excited about this new wave of not only a potential dynasty on our hands with either the Chiefs or the Bills or the Chargers or the Bengals but these 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 rivalries so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself I think there's a 99 percent chance that Jacksonville beats Tennessee I'm that confident I think the Titans are have already booked their trip to Cancun and the travel agent's been working nonstop. I think I think Jacksonville is going to win that game and win that game big. And I think inevitably it will be the Chargers and the Jaguars. I think I see the Bengals beating the Ravens. I think the Ravens are just struggling mightily on offense. I don't yep. know if Lamar Jackson can just come in after five, six weeks of being on the bench and just kind of go shot for shot with just right out of the gate. I have a hard time believing that. And even if somehow 
something fluky happens there. I see the Chargers prevailing against the Broncos. So I fully expect this to be a 4-5 in Jacksonville, but that's why they, they play the game, Ryan. Any given Sunday, anything can happen. Yeah, so you're saying you would go to betonline.ag and you would do a trifecta on the Chargers winning, the Jags winning, and the Bengals winning. Is that what I'm hearing, correct? That's correct, and that was an elite segue. My goodness, I mean... Folks that are listening here at home, you know, you can't teach greatness like that, that Ryan Dyer just displayed in terms of ad read. Well, there you go. Go to that trifecta. Use promo code BELIEVE, like we mentioned. Uh, get you a 50% welcome bonus. So, Chargers Broncos this weekend, season finale should be a lot of fun. It could be a bunch of backups playing if the Bengals win early on, or it could be the full bevy of stars trying to win outright the five seeds. So either way, it'll be a great way to end the season as this team gets the first look of Justin Herbert and Brandon Staley in the playoffs, which we'll talk all about next week. But that's all the time we got, both like the Chargers in this one. Uh, For those on radio, we'll be back after the break on podcasts. Chargers fans, we out. We'll talk to you all next week. You're listening to the LA Football Podcast.